I might have just heard the greatest voice of her generation. We're here with Naomi Aki, plays the amazing Whitney Houston. How are you feeling tonight? I'm very well, if not slightly nervous. I get it. Well, you look great. I actually read that Cinderella, the film, was like the first time you kind of saw her on screen and you said you were obsessed. Did your impression of her change in any way since then, since seeing her as a child and now playing her in this film? I mean, yeah, of course. Like, I think, like, someone that you admire that much, you put on a pedestal and you have extremely high expectations of, but. You know, getting to know her during the filmmaking, I, I, I realized like her flaws are what made her beautiful because it, it's like any one of us and if she can achieve something as great as she did, then that means anyone who has flaws can achieve many things too. Absolutely. And I know, as you said, that she had flaws. Was it hard for you to kind of tap into those feelings and, and really portray them on screen? Yeah, some were easier than others, you know. Um, I, I think, you know, her difficulty and her illness um, of addiction was was probably the harder thing to tap into, um, but I, I tried my best to treat it with as much compassion and sensitivity as possible. Amazing. And just one last question: What is after seeing her whole catalog, her whole musical catalog? I'm sure. What is your go-to Whitney Houston karaoke song? Oh, uh, it has and always will be. I want to dance with somebody, and I'm not even being twee. Like there's an article where I say that from about six years ago. I'm not even joking. Oh, I believe you. It's mine too. Thank you so much. Can you talk to me about the moment that you knew that Naomi was your Whitney? I was actually her screen test. I mean, I, I saw her screen test before I signed on and I was like, oh, this is going to work. You know, she's, I mean, she's incredible. And that was before she went through this incredible period of transformation. So I knew really early on. I mean, I had, I had complete confidence in her. And yet she managed to blow me away every day that I was on set, every single day. That's amazing. And we're so excited to see the film tonight. What, what was like, um, I know I'm so excited. And what was a moment for you that really just kind of gave you the chills when you were on set or really just kind of blew you away? I mean, there's so many. I mean, all of the performances are, are just incredible. I can't wait for you to see them. Yeah, definitely I got shivers when I was listening to them. And when she even went watching her rehearse, honestly. I mean, all the, every day. It was like a shivery kind of movie. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And we know this is like kind of the first studio film that has a black female director, a black female composer, and a black female editor. We did it. You did it. Yes, Congratulations did. Yes, on that. Yes, we did. How does the dance Oh, absolutely. Lemons, we did it and together. how does the impact feel for you for that? No, that I'm, you know, obviously I'm very, very proud of that. I'm very proud to have brought those women, to, you know, together to work on this project. It's really special. I know there were so many questions about Whitney. This film is a real deal. It answers, to my opinion, all those questions, as well as celebrating her music and that one-of-a-kind voice. Hi, we're here with Tamara Tooney, who plays Sissy Houston. Talk to us about what you felt when you stepped on that carpet tonight. Like, what was that first feeling like? Oh, wow, like? on the carpet tonight? Exhilarating and also um, a sigh of relief because we've been waiting for this night. You know, we've been waiting a year. We wrapped this movie a year ago and we've been waiting for this day. So it's just, it's thrilling, it's exciting. It's great to reunite with the cast. Um, it's just wonderful. Amazing. And I know that you've actually worked with Casey Lemons before on Eve's Bayou. That, I love that movie since I was a child. So You're narrating yes, in that. Yes. And the caveman's Valentine. And the cave, yes, absolutely. Yes, this is my third time working with Casey. And I feel like, you know, each movie was a little bigger and a little bigger, and now it's like the big blockbuster, there, and we're here together. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Well, that, does that make it even easier and like a no-brainer to take on this role of Sissy Houston? Oh, no, I wouldn't say that, because I was terrified. I was terrified. You know, it's daunting. I was like, oh, wow, that's a big shoe to fill, you know? Um, but, you know, uh, Casey believed in me, and the Houston family believed in me, and Clive Davis and the producers believed in me. So I believed in myself, and I took the leap. And did Sissy ever talk to you or give you any, like, input at all, or how would that work? No, 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 I wasn't able to talk to Sissy. Uh, but I, I, I read everything that she wrote herself, 
her autobiography, the book she wrote about Whitney and their relationship. I watched every interview she ever did. I went back to the 60s and on YouTube and saw some singing videos, you know. So I just dug deep that way, you know. And and Pat Houston, you know, she she was there oftentimes and if I had a question and she gave the thumbs up, you know, so yeah, it, it, she was on set Yeah, a bit. it was nice. It was really lovely. Really lovely. Amazing. And was there anything that you discovered about yourself while you were portraying this role that you came out of the movie with at all? Well, I, maybe not so much that I discovered about myself, but what I think a lot of people don't know is I sing, and so that's me singing in the movie. So it's the first time I've ever sung in a movie. Wow, congratulations. Deal, yeah, it was really fun. Well, we're all going to see it tonight. We're really excited about it, so thank you so much for speaking with us. My pleasure, thank, thank you. you. Hi, we're here with Chris, who's also in the film. He talked to us about how you feel tonight and playing Pat Houston as well. What was what was that like when it came to you, the role? Intimidating, right? Because <laughs> sometimes she was on set. And oh, I was, wow. Yeah, so wow. I was telling the story that like one of my first days, I'm in this uh, very short skirt and no pantyhose. And then over the, the walkie, they're like, um, we need to change our costume. Oh, Pat wouldn't wear that. Oh, like, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, or they'd be like, uh, the line. Which I actually appreciate, right? Because it's not just other people that know her are gonna watch this. And they're gonna want, you know, they'll be like, no, she wouldn't say that. So like, please correct me. So that, right? <laughs> as authentic as it can be. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. and how do you, did you guys talk throughout the set to really kind of get a feel for her character and how you would portray her? Not really, because she's so involved with other things. So I watched the TV show about the Houston's and, um, on YouTube and just try to gather as much information as I could that way because she's a pretty private person There's not like a ton about her So yeah, but you're able to dig deep a little bit and get some insight uh, for sure. Yeah You already directed a bit on that left Yeah, it was awesome and so kind like I was super intimidated, but very uh, demure and quiet and, Like I felt very supported did you find anything new about yourself when you were portraying her? Like, was there anything you um, discovered while playing her as a character? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, you know, to be... F my inner fabulousness, because my costumes are amazing! Oh, <laughs> yeah, they were really fun. Um, yeah, just, you know what I learned as an actor? The stamina that it takes to do a production like this is... At, like, I don't think... I don't think audiences understand what's asked. It's not even like, oh, especially of Naomi. Oh, yeah. So, like, learning to take care of yourself is so important. Yeah. Well, what is something that you really want the audience to take away from after watching this film? If it was like one thing to take away, um, humans can be legends, right? Whitney made a lot of human error, and still, hundred years from now, we'll, we'll still be in the zeitgeist. And I, I think that that's so important for young people to understand because sometimes things seem so unattainable so I think that that's important Absolutely. and do you have any go-to karaoke Whitney Houston song now that you've probably heard most of the catalog I imagine Girl, if any I'm song. trying to say no Whitney <laughs> <laughs> we could try we could try <laughs> oh, okay. don't get me started I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> I let the queen be herself. There are right. some things that need to not be touched right. by me. <laughs> well, I'm sure you did an amazing job and we cannot wait to see you on screen tonight. Thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Can you talk to us a little bit about how you feel tonight stepping onto the carpet with all this great energy that's going on? I feel fantastic, you know, and to look around and see everyone as they are as good actors rather than in character. It's lovely. I mean, you, you know, you, you see, you see, did you just see Naomi? Well, if you haven't, you will. She looks you know, from here. I know, <laughs> I know. She looks amazing as Naomi. She looks amazing as Whitney. You know, Stanley Tucci. You know, what else? What else? What else? What else is there? The dream team. Yes, yeah. yes. Well, it's I like working with them. Nafisa. Where's Nif? Okay. She's probably, she's probably making her way down. But what was it like working with this amazing cast? This amazing star-studded cast. It was good. It was good. Yeah, we. I think that we. Yeah, we're actors who work in theater as well as on stage, and so when you get that, there isn't. A, what we realize is that the story is a star, and that we are not the star. We're just there to tell the story and make sure that it gets out well. You know, and when you're working with people of like mind, it's easier to get that story told like that. 
Do you have any special moments that you found while you were guys were filming on set? Anything that really just kind of touched your heart or stayed with you after filming? Yeah, it was um, the hospital scene, and that's all I'm going to say because I don't want to give too much away. But that was um, that was very moving, very moving, and revealing. Difficult to walk away from that. Yes. And how did you keep yourself grounded? Thank you. How did you um, keep yourself grounded after shooting such tough, dark, heavy scenes like that? You make sure that you go to your fellow actor and you give them a hug and you say, are you all right? They say, yeah, I'm all right. Or they might say, I'm not too all right because I'm still carrying it. There's some sorrow inside me. So, And then you have to reach out and hold them. You know, that's what you have to do. Amazing. I love that there was so much love on set. Yes. I love that. And what do you want people most to take away from this film after watching tonight? That there is um, their dreams to be fulfilled. And if you've got one, go for it. Very inspirational and motivational. Thank you so much for speaking with Thank us. You, Hi, we're here with Bria Danielle Singleton. How are you feeling tonight? I'm feeling ecstatic. I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this. <laughs> the energy here is amazing. I'm hearing people sing all over. Like, yeah. it's amazing. That, like, that dance number we just had, that just, oh, it's so good. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. Now, can you talk to me a bit about what your process was like in this film? Like, what moments did you take away from in this film? Um, it was a lot of finding content with Bobby Christina about just, I wanted to feel, like when I was looking for stuff, I wanted to feel she was her being like her genuine self. Yeah. Like it was her just being, like, cause she was just like, she was so young during my duration. Like her being like an 18 year old or 17 year old, just like her being a kid. So it was a lot of looking for content like that. Absolutely. And did you find any particular ways to kind of connect with the character? Cause I know it's difficult being that where we are right now, but what kind of ways did you find to connect with her specifically? Um, I feel like I just found things that Bobby like made important that was just like what was important to her, like family or just like just like the little things where I just like I connect with that and then I just add on. Yeah. That's amazing. And what was it like working with Casey Lemons? Was this your first time working with her as a director? Yes, it is. And she is so oh my goodness, she's the sweetest person. She's very like I feel like she really took charge and she really just like brought this movie to life and she I, she did an amazing job like every clip i've seen i'm just like she she killed that like and you probably killed it too we'll see you tonight <laughs> yeah. and what do you want people to take away from after watching this film tonight um i want them to like really understand whitney's whole story because i feel like we always focus on the end and like like that's not that's not that wasn't her as a whole person like she they, they, like i said it's people focus on the end of the story when there's the whole other story of herself and like what she like what victory she had and like success and like like victories like i feel like that's really important to her as a person that's what made whitney whitney there's a lot of love in the air getting to see so many people that i kind of haven't in a little while is really really cool especially after all the bonds we made a lot of bonds on this yeah what was that like on set i mean you're working with this iconic figure in in musical history like what was that like working together in and out day in and out what was a, a daily day like for you guys I gotta say, I don't know if this is gonna sound cliche, but the family dynamic, like we really were. We really were. There was a lot of love, a lot of guidance, a lot of help, a lot of assistance. We carried each other. You know what I mean? The rough days weren't as rough because we were together. And it, that sounds so cheesy, but that's no, what it is. It's true. And I know a lot of her family was actually on set as well, so I'm sure that helped yeah, aid the film too. It was but, nice. Yeah. To get to meet Gary Houston, and yeah. I met I met his wife first, I met Pat. So for her to let me know, like, like I was okay. like, Cool, you know what I mean? That was good. That's awesome. Yeah. And what do you want the audience to really just take away from after seeing this film tonight for the first time? They know the legend, they know the music, they know the icon. This is where you get to meet the human. Learn the story a little more, you know what I mean? I hope that they get to refill the love for Whitney. That's what I want. Amazing. And what's your go-to Whitney Houston karaoke song? If you had one, uh, what would it be? Yeah, you can do oh, karaoke man, like, too. We can try. See. I, I'm, I'm gonna say I want to dance with somebody. So I'm a dancer, so it's a little oh. bias. It's a little bias. I gotta go, but I want to dance with somebody, man. I just, I let loose. I won't, I won't sound good, but I won't care. Now, Anthony, we know this is not your first time screenwriting for a musical icon such as maybe Whitney Houston. Can you talk about what approach you took this time and really just kind of uncovering her life in this film? Well, four years ago, Clive Davis asked me if I'd like to do Whitney Houston, um, and uh, here we are. So it's been an interesting journey. What I what decided from uh, 
me on doing this thing was that I don't think anyone's done justice to her as an artist, as a musical artist, and I don't think anyone on film has ever committed her performances to film in a way that I think does justice to what she would have been like live. So it was getting access to all the music the way no one else has ever done. All the documentaries and other attempts at movies haven't had access to the music. And I just felt you can't tell the Whitney story without the music. Well, absolutely. No. And I just want to say, like, this is going to be such an amazing night. We're so prepared for this movie. But we do know that not, like, many musicians sometimes don't have a very glamorous lifestyle. There are sometimes that are not so glamorous. Did you have any trepidation about going in, uh, writing this film with that trepidation of uncovering some things that maybe were dark in Whitney's life? Well, I think I always go in with trepidation. I, it, and I hope a healthy level of, of it. Um, with Whitney's life, I'm, I'm trying to uncover some truth that someone else hasn't touched on. Um, that's a very audacious thing to try and do with someone else's life. But it starts with a lot of research, talking to a lot of people. So I talked to everybody who would talk to me. Um, and I discerned a theme, which I hope is very uh, you know, evident in the film that you see. And it was a research for home. I, 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 my, my thing is that feeling is that she was on a very lifelong, a very deep lifelong search for, for home. Uh, and I think she found it with her daughter, and I think she found it right through her career with audiences. Absolutely. Yeah. And were there anything that you, was there anything particular that you kind of came out of this film maybe not knowing about Whitney that now you uncovered after looking into her life this way? Uh, we wanted to bring a massive musical experience um, for audiences here. And uh, m my biggest appreciation for her was as, as she didn't move around a lot. She didn't use a lot of gimmicks. It was all in the voice. And the power of that, of her voice and the artistry and the stagecraft that she possessed. When we refilmed it and Naomi had to embody it, I could just see what a once in a lifetime talent she was. The energy in this room is amazing. There's people singing and like actually singing, singing. So that's, that's amazing to see. It's, it's pretty crazy. I just saw like Clive Davis. You know, since like very briefly when we were shooting, I was like, still get starstruck. I mean, the man's a legend. So yeah, the energy uh, uh, in this whole movie, I think, is going to be uh, fun for everyone across the nation. Coming out December 23rd. And what was the approach that you took with this film? Like, what did you really want to make sure you showcase about Whitney Houston's life? Well, I think uh, seeing elements of her life uh, not told before. I think this is a brand new take on a familiar person. She's so well known. I feel like everybody has like knows their version of Whitney. So I think with the family being involved, this is going to be the version that is maybe the truest to what it was. So that for that, it's uh, pretty incredible. But the whole family's here. It's, it's pretty awesome. It's like part being part of a really cool piece of history of music and just uh, you know, she's the second biggest recording art female recording artist of all time. It's amazing. Very cool. Myself too, and yeah. actually, I heard that this was the first film that was able to get access to all of her songs, that's like right. the collective. Yeah, that's why the family it was so important for the family to be involved. And uh, Jeff Caligari and Dennis O'Sullivan, the head, you know, lead team on this. Uh, you can't talk about this movie without talking about them. And obviously, Anthony McCartan, who wrote Bohemian Rhapsody, and a uh, new movie that we have coming up called The Collaboration. He's the uh, uh, the writer of that as well. So um, I, it wouldn't surprise me if the gentleman was not nominated for yet another Oscar. For, for my mouth to God's ears, hopefully. So. And what do you want everyone to really take away from this film tonight after seeing it? Yeah, well, I mean, I hope, I hope uh, across the nation people just can't help but get up and dance in the, in the audience. I don't know how some people's movie experience is going, but it's going to be, it's hard not to just like jam with this thing, yeah. you know, so uh, it would be fun to watch, actually. Well, we're already I'm jamming gonna, on the I'm carpet. sneak in a few theaters and see if that happens. Yes, you should. You should. And I, people are already jamming on the carpet, so I know it's going to be a great hit in yeah, the theater tonight. music when I got in here. This is a party. This red carpet's a party right now. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. We thank can't you. wait to see the film. And you guys, I'm formally inviting you right now. Come to the Mammoth Film Festival. Let's red carpet there and we'll talk more movies. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right. You know I got to ask, what time is it? Time to get busy, baby. That's right. That's right. And can you tell me what is your fondest or maybe your best memory with Whitney Houston? My first time ever meeting Whitney is my most fondest 
and my most best memory of Whitney ever. And I was so starstruck when I first met her. We were doing a TV show called The Word Show. And we were over in England. You know what I'm saying? And, and the way that she embraced me, you know what I'm saying? She was so gracious. She was so humble. She was so nice to me. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, it brings tears to my eyes, you know, because the way that I, I was starstruck, man. I never yeah. took gymnastics, but I was flipping. <laughs> I was flipping. <laughs> I'm telling everybody just what I'm telling you. And it's real talk, man. But, but the whole world right now, the whole music industry is missing a hand off of the arm. Yeah. Because that's what she was. She was the greatest love of all.